Sean Hamrin. All right, all right, hello. Yes, oh my God, hello. Yes, you all, this is gonna be fun. Thank you so much for coming, this is awesome. Uh, let's just jump right into it. I'm losing my hair, do you guys see it? You guys see it? Is it coming in good? Is it coming in hot under these lights? It's bad. I know it's bad. I've seen it myself. It's bad. I don't like balding. I don't care for it. Um, here's the thing, though. Here's where I'm at with it. You know, I'm fine with going bald in my 50s, but I'm in my 30s, and I look like I'm in my 20s, and uh, I guess... I guess I just like to be able to grow into my face before I lose my hair. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? That's how I'd like to do it. Um, because when you have a baby face and a bald spot, you look young from the front, but old from the back. That's, that's how it works. It's like two different people. It's like student discount, senior discount. Do you guys see it? It's bad. It's like first day on the job, ready for retirement. You guys see it, right? You see it. It's like frat house, assisted living, razor scooter, rascal scooter. Can I see some ID? Are you lost? It's bad. I know. I know what it looks like. I'm doing stuff though, I'm taking Propecia, which is a pill that's supposed to help with hair loss. And uh, when I went to the doctor to get my prescription, he was like, just so you know, one of the side effects of Propecia is a decreased libido. And I was like, great, I'll take it for that reason alone. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I wanna keep my hair, but you're telling me there's a pill that will make me stop thinking about sex all the time and have a healthy relationship with the internet again? I want it, give it to me, give it to me now, I need it. He's like, it's a difficult decision for a lot of men. I'm like, how? How is this a difficult decision? <laughs> if I take Propecia, I'll have hair and a lower sex drive, but if I don't, I'll just be bald and horny? Give it to me. <laughs> I need it now, okay? All right, that's not an option for me, Doc. If I go bald with this baby face, I'll just look like a baby, okay? <laughs> and nobody wants a big horny baby, all right? <laughs> Been alive long enough to know that, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> the good news, the good news is my sex drive is still pretty steady. It's pretty consistent, you know? It's humming along at a good clip. My girlfriend's sex drive is different. She'll have these spikes, these windows where like she gets horny and I just gotta be around for it. I came home the other day, her vibrator was just out on the bed. I was like, damn it, I missed it, you know? like. <laughs> I felt like a detective in a movie. I was like, it's still warm. She couldn't have gone far. Let me just track her down while she's still in the mood. Um, a little bit about me, born and raised in LA. Who else? Where are the natives? Where are my Angelinos? Oh, a lot of you. Okay. I don't know. I, I might be the most LA person you'll ever meet. My mom's an actress. My dad's a yoga teacher. And I love cocaine. Okay. <laughs> it's all true. Um, my dad is a yoga teacher. He's also a massage therapist. I got a massage from him the other day. Is that weird? A little bit? All right. Um, hey, did you guys know when your dad's a massage therapist, a happy ending is when he says he's proud of you? Did you guys know that? <laughs> Haven't gotten one yet, but I'll bet it feels amazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> What a release. Uh... <laughs> my parents are like polar opposites. My dad's a minimalist and my mom's a hoarder, which makes them super divorced. Um, she got everything and he was fine with it. That's how that worked out. Um... Including me, my mom got me, she raised me by herself. My dad left when I was a kid, because as I mentioned, he's a minimalist. Um... I didn't even need a son. Crazy. I know, I know. He Marie Kondo'd his family. It's wild. Um, it was the drugs, though. My dad, my dad, after the divorce, he got really addicted to drugs, um, especially crack. That was his favorite. Loved his crack. And um, he used to make his own crack, too. And I, I got lunch with him the other day, and I was asking him, I was like, hey, do you remember how to make crack? Like, if you had to do it, could you do it? 
And he was like, he was like, oh yeah, I've done it so many times. You take pure cocaine, water, and baking soda, mix it into a paste. You cook the paste down into a rock. You put the rock in a crack pipe, and you smoke it. And um, yeah, that's the only thing he's ever taught me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to throw a football or tie a tie, but I'll cook you some crack. That's right. That's... Who wants some? All right. Three ingredients. It's very simple. Um, this is probably a good time for me to uh, share something I don't normally share with people. I am a recovering elementary school substitute teacher. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a really hard job. I wouldn't recommend it. You're around kids all day long, and kids are really good at giving you new insecurities. Um, like, I remember one time this kid told me I had a small face. So you guys see it? See, I always thought I had a big forehead, but you know what you get when you have a big forehead? Anyone? Small face, that's, a, that's right, yes. That's, you nailed it. Someone's listening, good for you. And that was how I started my day, too. I was like, good morning, class. And he was like, you have a small face. And I was like, that'll stay with me forever. Um, It's a really hard job. All day long, kids are coming up to you with problems. All day long. But it's because they're trying to get out of class, right? You remember how it is. And what you got to do is you got to one-up their problems. They don't know what to do with that. This kid came up to me, and he was like, my tummy hurts. And I was like, oh, yeah? Well, my girlfriend's getting coffee with her ex. <laughs> how do you think that makes my tummy feel, huh? <laughs> And then he just sat right down. That was, that was the end of that. Uh, didn't hear from him the rest of the day. Um, there's a lot, it's, I complain, but there, there's some things I like about the job. Like one of them is, uh, it's very easy to impress kids as an adult. Like uh, I remember one time at kickball, I kicked the ball super far and my whole class was like, oh! And then later on, all the kids were jumping up and trying to touch the top of the door frame and I touched it without jumping. And again, my whole class was like, oh! And then they were saying stuff like, wow, you're the tallest and you're the strongest. But what I didn't tell them was how much I needed to hear those things. <laughs> it felt real nice, I'll be honest. Um, Another thing I like about the job is when you're in these elementary schools, there's all these like inspirational and motivational quotes everywhere, which, you know, I think that's great. I think kids should be surrounded by positivity. And a lot of them are like, you know, follow your dreams and never give up and stuff like that. But I saw one once, it was a big mural. It said, we must be willing to let go of the life that we have planned so as to accept the life that is waiting for us. And uh, yeah, I, just, I feel like that one's really more for the teachers. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Right? <laughs> that one's for us. <laughs> I have definitely let go of the life I've planned. <laughs> I went to college for theater. Anyone else make that <laughs> ginormous mistake? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> wow, a lot of you, okay. Well, this will be relatable. Um, the things I learned in college haven't served me at all in the real world, <laughs> like not even a little bit like, like, to give you an idea, when someone was overacting in a scene, one of my professors would say, don't ouch more than you're pinched. <laughs> and a few weeks ago, I accidentally bumped into this woman at the grocery store, and she was like, hey, watch where you're going. And I was like, oh, don't ouch more than you're pinched. <laughs> and that's the most I've used my degree. That's... <laughs> Two hundred grand for a comeback at Trader Joe's. That's where we're at with that. So yeah, my career's not going too great. Uh, I got friends that were killing it. I'm just trying to keep up with my friends, honestly. Some are on TV shows, signed to record labels. I just, I feel so far behind so many of my friends. I have one friend who was addicted to heroin, got clean, started a company, then sold that company. And like, I don't know. I haven't even tried heroin. Do you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> 
It's just so much further ahead than I am. It's just... So if anyone has any heroin, uh, I'll trade you for some crack. How about that? Uh, it's not all bad, though. I just got engaged. Thank you very much. Just got engaged. Thank you. Finally, according to her, um, it's... It's, uh, it's good. I'm excited to marry her. I love her a lot. She's, uh, she's awesome in a lot of ways. Um, I'm really grateful for her. I think it's important to be grateful for your partner, you know? Like, first of all, she's way out of my league. I don't know why she's with me. She's tall. She's blonde. She's gorgeous. Like, like if you saw us, you wouldn't think we were together. You'd be like, oh, that's a Norwegian model with her Airbnb host. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you just wouldn't put it together, is my point. Um... I th I'm grateful for her. I think she's grateful for me, too, because I'm like a nice guy, you know? And uh, before we started dating, she used to get hit on by a bunch of douchebags who used to do things like neg her. Do you guys know what negging is? It's like a, right? It's, um, it's like a pickup term for when guys flirt with mean, backhanded compliments. I don't know how to do that. I, I met my girlfriend at a potluck, and she made carrot cake. And I was like, wow, this carrot cake's really good. And she was, like, surprised. <laughs> that that was it, you know? That I wasn't like, for a slut, or... <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I just liked her carrot cake, I don't know. Um, I love her a lot, she's, she's awesome, I love her. But she does, uh, she does text me too much, all the time, uh, about everything. Um, <laughs> Like, things you don't even need to text a person. She sent me a text the other day that said, I had to cancel my hair appointment because I got an audition, but then they rescheduled my audition, so I kept my hair appointment. And I was like, okay, so everything's the same? Is that... Great, I'm going to do nothing with that information. I appreciate that. Keep me posted, babe. It's, uh, we've been together six years. You, you learn a lot about yourself when you're with someone for that long. Like, uh, like, here's the thing. If you were to ask me what I think I say most during sex, it'd probably be something like, yeah, or, uh, mm-hmm. The other day, my girlfriend told me the thing that I say most during sex is, oh, wow. <laughs> That's me during sex. That's what she has to have sex with. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. She makes nice lady noises like, ah, oh, and I sound like a dad with a new iPhone. <laughs> or Owen Wilson in every movie. <laughs> um, feel bad for her. <laughs> it's... <laughs> We're getting to that point where we have to like try new things, you know? Like, actually the other day, uh, my girlfriend told me she met this woman she thinks we should see together because it'll take our relationship to the next level. And I was like, oh, okay, we're having a threesome, aren't we? Hell yeah. <laughs> she was like, she's a therapist, Sean. <laughs> we're seeing a therapist. And I was like, oh, okay, role play, nice, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. She can pretend to be a therapist, and we can pretend to be a couple that doesn't need therapy. How about that? It wasn't a threesome, obviously. Um, has anyone here had a threesome? Anyone? One right there, one right Oh, a few of you, okay. You two, was it the same one? Or was it? <laughs> wow, small world. Um, that's a pretty good number. What about uh, the rest of us? Are we all just? Doing people one at a time? Is that the... Is that the system? Single file? Is that the... All right. I, uh... I've never had a threesome either. We've talked about it. My girlfriend and I, we've talked about it. Uh, one time she asked me if I'd be open to a threesome, but three of my ex-girlfriends are now lesbians. Um, so I was like, only if it's with a dude, okay? I... <laughs> It's a risk I can't take. I don't want to lose you, all right? I'm a small, balding man. You're as good as it gets for me, all right? Like, 
I am. I'm a small guy. There's not as many options for us. Like, I'm shorter than her, which is rare, because, you know, women usually like men who are tall, and then there's guys like me who have to be funny. Like, <laughs> like you know how girls will wear their boyfriend's clothes, and it'll be, like, cute? Because, like, the clothes are all big and baggy, and it makes them look all small and tiny. Well, when she wears my clothes, they fit. Uh, we're really more like sisters. <laughs> She's like, how do I look? And I'm like, great, but I was gonna wear that top tonight. <laughs> not fairer. <laughs> Being a small guy, it's not the, that great. It's, there's more downsides than upsides, I'll say. Um, it's self-defense isn't really an option when you're a, when you're a little guy. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> one time my girlfriend and I were physically assaulted, which um, was really scary. That had never happened to either one of us before. I'll tell you what happened. We were leaving a party, and uh, on our way out, we passed by my friend Rachel, who was hosting the party, and uh, Rachel was getting screamed at by this woman who was one of the neighbors, upset about the music, I guess. But this woman was more upset than I've ever seen anyone in my entire life. She was furious. She was, like, this close to Rachel, like screaming, and it was too much for the situation. And my girlfriend was like, I'm gonna say something. I was like, no, no, don't say anything. Uh, she, was like, she was like, no, I'm gonna say something. I was like, please don't, don't say anything. And then she said the thing she wanted to say, which was, you know, you don't have to be so rude. And I was like, okay, I hope that was worth whatever happens next. And um, it wasn't, because an angry woman charged my girlfriend and hit her in the back of the head. And then I turned around to say something, but before I could, the angry woman's boyfriend came out of nowhere, charged at me, picked me up, but because I didn't put up a fight, he, he didn't know what to do with me. So he just ran with me. He just, he just like carried me down the driveway. And I don't know why, but it was my instinct to wrap my legs around him, like. I just, I just went full koala, you know? I was just hanging on for dear life. Like, it was very intimate, almost romantic. Like, cause then he slammed me into a fence, but it was like a chain link fence. So I was like, whoa. It felt as if we dove into a waterbed on our wedding night. I'm not gonna lie. It was total stranger. Didn't even get his name. And then we had to file a police report because it was assault. We had it, we're at the police station. The cop's like, all right, what happened? My girlfriend's like, this woman came out of nowhere and hit me in the head. And he's like, all right, and then what happened? She looks at me, and he looks at me. I was like, and then her boyfriend carried me? <laughs> he's like, he carried you? I was like, yeah, you know, I just like held me so, so tight and ran with me. Um, <laughs> He's like, are you sure you want to put that in the report? I was like, actually, no. Uh, thinking about it now, I don't know if I want it in writing. It's, it was embarrassing, you know. It, I wasn't hurt, but my pride was, you know what I mean? Like, my girlfriend was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I said that. I was like, no, I'm so sorry you saw that. Like, must be hard to still be attracted to a man after you watched him get carried effortlessly by another man. Um, So yeah, we're working through that. Um, <laughs> thanks for laughing at that. <laughs> this is good, getting together and laughing. This is this is feels right. This is nice, right? To do this after after the years that we've had. Jesus, I mean, does everything just feel so heavy right now? Doesn't it? Doesn't every the world just feel heavy? There's so much happening. It's I think about climate change all the time. Do you guys do you guys want to do something about climate change? Do you? Yeah. I think we say we want to do something about climate change, but when they tell us what it takes, we try to compromise, you know? They're like, hey, you want to do something about climate change? We're like, yeah, totally. And they're like, stop driving cars and eating meat. And we're like, okay, well, what if we just got rid of straws? <laughs> can, we, can we do that instead? Is that... I did read that not eating meat is a big one in the fight against climate change, which is a bummer because meat's delicious and because that means vegans were right about thinking they're better than us. Um, <laughs> I've been eating plant-based meat. Uh, I don't know if you guys know it. It's delicious. I eat it all the time. You guys are beyond impossible. There's some good brands out there. Tastes like meat made from plants. It's awesome. But I read this uh, article the other day. It said, scientists say plant-based meat isn't as healthy as we think. 
And I was like, can you just let us have this, scientists? You know what I mean? Like, I hate it when these scientists come out with these studies because it's never good news, you know? They're never like, hey, turns out cocaine has omega-3s. It's never that, you know? It's always a bummer. I've been eating vegetarian, which is uh, easy to do in LA because we invented it, but um, <laughs> it's harder to do abroad. One time I was at this restaurant in Thailand and I, uh, I ordered the mixed vegetables and it was just all squid, the whole thing. <laughs> then I tried to order the eggplant, which was only complicated by the language barrier. I asked the server, I was like, hey, do you guys have eggplant? She was like, huh? And I was like, eggplant. She was like, huh? And I didn't have an international plan, otherwise I would have just Googled a picture of an eggplant, so I showed her the eggplant emoji. <laughs> And she was like, no. And I was like, no, 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 you give me to eat. And she was like, no. No. There's other things you can do for the environment. You can get a bidet. I got a bidet. I'm saving so much toilet paper. You guys got one? Get one. They're amazing. Yes. If you don't know what it is, it's a device that shoots a stream of water up your ass to clean out your butthole. Um, but I read that statistically, bidets aren't as popular with straight men, which is just homophobia at its dumbest, don't you think? There's guys out there who are like, nah, -uh, nice try, bidet. I like pussy. I'd rather have a dirty asshole than a gay toilet. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Homophobia is so dumb because we're all at least a little gay, right? It's the spectrum, right? Like, everyone's gay for someone. I'm either straight or I haven't met him yet. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was a guy who carried me. Maybe he's the one that got away I don't know we've all had gay thoughts and feelings is my point point. and if you haven't yet you will oh they're they're out there they'll get you okay no one's safe all right and when that happens you can either act on them you can just acknowledge them or you can shove them deep deep down and never know why Chris Pine's abs make you angry okay those are your options I wish all the bad stuff would just, I wish like climate change and homo, I wish, I wish it all just go away. Racism, I wish it just all disappear, you know? Like, maybe we'll never be able to completely get rid of racism, but uh, I think there's things we can do to prevent it, or at least discourage it, you know? Like, I think if you don't like a certain group of people, you shouldn't be allowed to get enjoyment from their culture. What do you think of that, huh? What do you think of that, right? Like, if you don't like Mexicans, you don't get to eat Mexican food, okay? Sorry. You should have thought of guacamole before you filled your heart with hate, okay? And they should make you prove it, too, like at a restaurant. Oh, you want the chicken enchiladas? Let me see your Facebook page. And if you don't like black people, then you don't get to listen to rap. Or blues, or jazz, or funk, or rock, or any music. No music. <laughs> Just Phil Collins and NPR. That's all you get, okay? And you can't watch sports either, except for hockey. Woo, cool. And competitive hacky sack, if that's a thing. I don't know. Look at your life without cultural influences. Just sitting there, watching the hockey game, eating a turkey mayo sandwich, listening to Creed. Yeah. Fun. And if you don't like white people, that's, um, that's totally fine. That, <laughs> nothing changes. <laughs> you still get to enjoy all the things we've contributed, like dog strollers and the phrase, cool beans. <laughs> that's it for me. I love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>